now we're going to talk about waves and the nature of waves and what they are. So for example, a wave, we toss a rock into a pool or a puddle or a, a pond or whatever it is, and when it hits, we, we, take a, we cause a disturbance that causes energy to flow out in all directions. We can also do this with a slinky. If we attach a slinky to a wall, we can pull the coil back and push it forward and we can get a wave to go across, or we can take the coil, move it up and down to get a wave that would have this type of shape. But either movement will again make a wave. Now, some terminology here to help you. When we take the slinky and stretch it from end to end, it is at rest. This is the equilibrium or rest position that we previously talked about with vibrations. The coils of a slinky will assume this position, and normally they will be spaced equally apart as long as they're not been damaged. To introduce a wave, we just have to displace or move the particle from its equilibrium or rest position. So we take the end of the slinky and we move it. We can move it upwards or downwards, forwards or backwards, but once we move it, we let it go and it will return to its original equilibrium or rest position. When we move the first coil in a given direction and then it returns to its equilibrium position, we do what is called making or causing a disturbance in the slinky. If we do this just for one coil in the slinky in a single vibration, then what we get is what is called a pulse. When we just do a very a simple single motion back and forth or up and down, it is called a pulse. So a pulse is a single disturbance from one location to another. However, if we were to do this over and over, back and forth, back and forth, or up and down, up and down, we would have a repeating disturbance. This repeating disturbance is what is called a wave. So the difference between a wave and a pulse is that a pulse is a single disturbance while a wave are repeating periodic disturbances, okay, that move the medium. So again, Here's equilibrium or rest, rest position of the slinky. Once we apply a back and forth motion to our slinky, we get a pulse or a wave being formed. Pulse if it's a single disturbance, and a wave if it's a repeating disturbance. Now this talk of medium, what's a medium? A medium is the material that carries the wave. So when we talk about mediums, um, in the case of the slinky, it's obviously the slinky. When we talk the sound waves, our medium is air. If there's an earthquake, our medium is going to be the ground, but is through which the material that causes the wave to travel. Okay, so it's the material, and the mediums are important, so we have to pay attention to that. Now, how how it looks, and we're going to look at this on a particle term term here. Um, so if we have our medium as particles, so we're going to use a slinky as an example. These particles are all standing still in a rest position. Once the spring is moved, then these particles will move. But these particles, in the case, will move in the same. So if, the, say, the, the spring is moved up and down, this particle will be here. But this particle will move up. This particle will move up. This particles will start to come down. But what we see is the particles moving up and down, okay, from its rest position, which is here. So they will displace from their rest position. Now, what is a wave? Wave is an energy transport. What it is is the disturbance moves from one medium to another, and the energy is transported from one end of the medium to the other. Okay, so think of our slinky wave. It starts here in the slinky. All right, it starts here, and then it moves throughout the slinky to get to the end. Now, here's the big thing about a wave, and this is something you cannot forget. A wave transports its energy without transporting matter. So the energy is transported, but the matter is not. So think about an ocean wave. Waves are seen through the ocean, okay? But water always returns to its rest position. Water always goes back. This is a circular wave. The, the particles go constantly in a circle. But they always return back to their rest position. Even though energy is transported, the water molecules are not transported. So in a wave, water isn't moving. The energy is. And the proof of that is if we look at the ocean, if water moved with the waves, there'd be no water in the middle of the ocean, which there is. So not all the water moves to the, to the shore. What happens is the energy passes through 
and the particles pass it along in circles to the next particle. So waves transport energy, not matter. Key point about waves. Think about something on a wave, on a water wave, let's say a duck or a gull or a boat docked in, whatever. It bobs up and down. And that's because the circular fashion is the disturbance in the water, right? The particles are moving like this. And the object on top of the water is going to move up and then down, up and then down, just with that, with that. So in conclusion, it's a disturbance that travels through a medium, transporting energy from one location to another location without transporting matter. The particles are temporarily displaced, and then they return to equilibrium position. A disturbance that travels through a medium, transporting energy from one location to another location without transporting matter. The medium is displaced, but the medium always returns to its original equilibrium position. Now what I want you to do now is, um, in ECHO, there's a, a slinky simulation. I want you to work through that in the papers, and then we'll kind of walk through some of these same, uh, same concepts that we're talking about. Once you finish, then please uh, return to the video. Now, um, after the slinky simulation, hopefully you had an idea as to what um, was going on. But um, longitudinal and transverse waves and surface waves, so the different types of waves. A transverse wave is where the particles move in a direction perpendicular to the direction that the wave moves. So, for example, the waves move in this way, but the particles move up and down. And this is most common in what we see with a transverse wave. But they move at right angles or perpendicular. Particles move up and down while the wave transfers um, perpendicular to it. So the energy goes perpendicular to the particle motion. In a longitudinal wave, it's where they both move in the same direction or parallel. So in a longitudinal wave, the particles move this way and then back while the energy goes this way. So the particles get closer together and farther apart. And in doing so, they transfer the energy from one particle to another, all heading in to the right in that direction. But they're parallel to each other, not perpendicular. So longitudinal is parallel. Um, probably the best example of longitudinal wave and something that we'll look at um, here with these waves are longitudinal waves are sound waves. And um, so if we take a, uh, a tuning fork and we hit it, what we see is the sound waves, the air comes, spreads out, comes together, spreads out, comes together, spreads out, comes together. What that does is that transfers the um, sound out away from the tuning fork. Um, and then if we were talking about just hearing things, the lips of the speaker to the ear of the listener, they vibrate back and forth in the same direction and opposite direction of energy transport, but they move parallel to the movement of the sound wave, which makes them longitudinal. Now, we're talking about solid mediums. In a solid medium, we can have either transverse or longitudinal waves. But tr waves traveling through the a fluid are always longitudinal waves. So when we talk about fluid, like water waves, or things going through, like sound going through, or air, um, a gas, or a liquid, are longitudinal. Transverse waves need more of a rigid medium to transport this energy. So when we talk about earthquakes, earthquakes we thought would be both tra would be a transverse wave, but we also see longitudinal waves in there. Now what that told us as scientists is that the ground and the earth is solid. Right, But because the earthquake waves pass through the center of the Earth, since we saw longitudinal waves, there must be a fluid somewhere. And so the belief is in the center of the Earth is a fluid. And that's why we think uh, that the Earth is mostly molten iron on the inside, because of the longitudinal waves that we see when we measure earthquakes. Last kind of wave is a surface wave. And that's where the particles undergo circular motion. And this is what we see on the surface of an ocean, or the surface between two, uh, two different mediums, which is between air and water. The particles will move this way, hit the next particle, which will move this way, hit the next particle, which will move this way, and so forth. And what we get is a constant rolling. But this particle stays in the same spot. It just rolls in a circle to get back to its beginning point. Okay. So they undergo a complete circle motion, but as they hit the next particle, the next particle then carries the energy along. So now let's look at uh, longitudinal and transverse waves once again. Longitudinal waves, as the source moves left to right, the coils move left and right, energy is then transported left to right. 
if the source moves up and down, the coils move up and down, but the pole or the energy goes perpendicular. Transverse, perpendicular, longitudinal, parallel. And you can see the examples with slinkies. And hopefully in the slinky simulation, you saw both when you manipulated your slinky. Now, electromagnetic and mechanical waves. Though we'll talk about electromagnetic waves here, just understand that it's not something that we spend a lot of time on. But electromagnetic waves are a wave that is capable of transmitting through a vacuum, so outer space. Light is electromagnetic. It goes from the sun to earth. Because it's, ele because it's electromagnetic, it can travel through the vacuum of space. Um, electromagnetic waves are produced by charged particles vibrating. Okay, So the charged particles vibrate up and down while the light continues to be perpendicular to it. A mechanical wave is one that requires um, a medium. Okay, It can't travel through a vacuum. It has to have a medium to make it happen. And this medium, again, solid, liquid, or gas doesn't matter, but it needs a medium. Sound waves need air. Mechanical wave. Okay, Sound waves do not travel through a vacuum. There is no sound in space because there's no molecules that transport the sound in space. So slinky waves, water waves, stadium waves, jump rope waves are all examples of mechanical waves. Each one requires a medium in order to exist. Now your next step in your uh, in your progress here is to do two things. There's an exploring wave simulation and a waves assignment on, uh, on ECHO for you to do.